Today, I come to you in the footsteps of our great prophet and saint, Marcus Messiah God. I bring greetings of love from my big brother, Dr. Julius Winston God. I must first say, when the vision of bringing Dr. Garvey to Jamaica to celebrate his father's 125th birthday celebration came to me two years ago, I knew I had to bring him to his people. And so the ancestors lead me in the pathway I must follow. I tried to make connections with the true people that kept the fire blazing in carrying on the teachings and philosophy of our great leader, saint, and prophet, Marcus Messiah Garvey. I met with Empress Esther and Prophet Greg at one of their meetings at King Ita Restaurant, Crossroads. I promised them that I would bring the second son of our great prophet to his people at Bobo Hill. On Thursday, August 16th, from as early as 12 midday, there was a massive thunderstorm with lightning flashing across the sky and heavy downpour of rain that was not predicted by any meteorologist. It rained all the way to the airport and at about 4.30 p.m. when Dr. Julius Garvey touched down at the Norman Manley International Airport and myself and Maureen Gutsmore escorted him to meet his people accompanied by Father Walder, Russ Oshin, Honorable Racy Matras, Russ Walder, and others. And as he exited the first class lounge, the sun came out. Not one single drop of rain fell thereafter. There to meet him was Russ Miguel Lawn, Empress Esther, Brother Brissett, Brother Drummonds from the Ethiopian World Federation and a host of Rastafarians and friends welcoming with songs and cheers. I felt good. He participated in a number of events August 17, 2012. First, appearing on TVJ, It's Morning Time, after which we took him to meet with Honorable Ronald Twaits, Minister of Education, signing the book that was kept safe and secure by his wonderful wife, Amy Jakes Garvey. The philosophy and opinion of Marcus Garvey, which was long overdue, was finally introduced last September to our school curriculum. We then took him to National Heroes Park, where he laid a wreath at his father's shrine. We then took Dr. Garvey to Liberty Hall, where he officially participated in the opening of a mobile museum which would take his father's legacy to the people who could not come to Liberty Hall. We then move on to St. Williams Grants Park, where he marched most of the way in an annual march for Garvey. Along the way, he witnessed first time the demolition of poor people's dwelling on Duke Street, as they were classified as squatters. He stopped and commented that it is the responsibility of the government to make sure its citizens have proper housing as was advocated by his father. CVM Television was there to capture the entire scenario as it unfolds. He then continued back to National Heroes Park, where he joined in a great gathering of Rastafarians who were not invited to the official ceremony earlier that day but had their own way of paying respect and celebrating the 125th birthday to our great hero and saint, Marcus Messiah Garvey. Something that they do annually. Later on that day of August 17th, saw Dr. Julius Garvey receiving the keys to the city posthumously on behalf of his father, from who worship the mayor, Angela Brownberg, at Emancipation Park, which was named because it was his father, the right honorable Marcus Messiah Garden, who says these now famous words, which was put in Bob Marley's redemption song. 
emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Later on that day, a special tribute concert with superstar Sisa Kalanji and others, put on by Big Stone Records and Production, was held at the Eastern Peace Center, 121 Winwood Road. On the 18th of August, we took Dr. Garvey to the Jakes Road community where he grew up as a young boy. The entire community came out to greet him, marching band and all. He was met, he was met by Minister Julian Robinson and Deputy Mayor Swaby of the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation. Then finally, we took him to Bubble Hill, to you, the real people. who kept the fire blazing hot. We was in for the biggest welcome of his visit. When we stepped into the yard at Bubba Hill, Caesar Kalanji, Princess, Prince Jessus, Empress Esther, Prophet Greg, and you great people was there to greet us with open arms. Then something happened to me as I started to film this great welcome. You all started to sing a song honoring Marcus I. Selassie I and yeah. Prince Emmanuel. When I heard that song and see the way you treated Dr. Garvey, while I was filming, tears rolled down my face and I cried like a baby. You all rolled out the red carpet for the son of our great prophet Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Now I must share this with you. As I prepare myself to come here, bringing a token of Dr. Garvey's appreciation. On Saturday, I tried many times to get in touch with Dr. Garvey. I knew he had went to Ethiopia, and so I had wanted to ask him if there was any final words he would like to impart to you, but I could not make contact with him. I went to bed Saturday night, and I visioned the holy land of Africa. It was like I was physically there in the flesh. It's like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. What was so astonishing about that experience was that even though I immediately connected with my brothers and sisters there, I could not speak the language. I tried communicating with my brothers and sisters, and they smiled with me, shook my hands, but I could not utter a word that they could understand. Neither the words that they uttered, I could not understand. Then and there, I knew and felt the wickedness that was handed down to our people, even though I felt at home. I was unable to reason with my brothers and sisters how we were robbed of our identity, our culture, and our language by evil people. I know more than ever, repatriation is a must. I got up at two o'clock Sunday morning and I wrote this message. Today, I stand before you speaking a language that was forced upon me, and you understanding a language that was forced upon all our people, I promise you that I will use the same language that they forced upon me to fight oppression, victimization, poverty, and enslavement in our minds, and help to bring my people home to Africa. On behalf of my bigger brother, Dr. Julius Winston Garvey, I'd like to make present to the Ethiopian International Congress, International Congress, Congress. and the uh, women, Empress, woman. Empress. You know, it's a long word, and but you understand that I understand. And that presentation, I would like to do that, you know, in in a more remote manner which would not be publicized to like the entire world because you know we welcome the press and we honor you all. But first I must say that that song that you sung, Jeremiah is the prophet, Messiah God, is his name. Touch my heart. And I thank you very much from the depths of my heart for being here and sharing with you the suffering that they have put us through as a race of people.
thanks, you know, for such a glorious presentation, you know. From the you know, the honorable Virgin, you know. You hear and feel and them feel and them come from the area and present the honor, you know, see. And so one of the best welcome you receive, you know. When you come home, say, and I, I say, oh, we humble and rest for the place. Uh. Some people have come out and say, we know nothing, you know, say. And yet, we are the highest, you know. Mm -hmm. So give thanks, you know, for them word, you know. And to I know, ever know, see where the eyes because I know ever hold the honor of a prophet, you know. And Marcus Gal come and declare to I know, say, a man, brother, and butter is only show when them work for it, you know, see. So it's I and I, you know, have to set myself to build this foundation, you know. And that's when the world of people come, you know, and see I know, them can appreciate what I say because when you go where Emmanuel, you know, and you go amongst Marcus Gal, go His Majesty. Them three man, they are man with ever upright and clean. This man said, so I and I up on the hill here. It's I and I work and development for the establish the foundation yeah? Because we know the whole world of people are come to this. We don't start to see people here. Just say, come over here, you raise somebody. So you see people are crying and they're like, Dad, I come over just to reach the foundation, you know? So I give thanks when I have those glorious words from the honorable prophet, you know? And declare. So, I kind of just know manfully and through enough things to go through still, you know. I'm on all level for free for any other royal virgin you'd like to have like a song, my lord. Bless you, Rastafari.